You know, the web is a perfect museum, an infinite museum. You can type in an artist's name, the title of an iconic painting, and you get hundreds of reproductions. Let's look at these closely. You know, they're not all exact reproductions. We may have to throw out the homages, the remixes, the porn, the coffee mugs. But what we're left with when we do that is still many, many reproductions. And let's look at how different those are. Imagine the different impressions those would make if that was the only version of this painting you'd ever seen. And it's not just the colors, it's all sorts of other aspects as well. For instance, some people just don't reproduce the whole painting. Um, on the left, Danae has a heel. On the right, she doesn't. Why not? Maybe they thought Klimt should have painted a square painting. Now, why are there so many differences? You know, it's tempting to just chalk this up to you know, unreliable sources. Maybe we're getting imagery from places like ownapainting.com, which offers 100% hand-painted oil painting reproductions, 15% off if you enter the code masterpiece. But that's not fair. <laughs> you know, we see the same problem with like, pretty pricey art books as well. Um, here are two, and on the left, you can see they've cropped out a bunch of her hair. And the two disagree, if you look on the bottom, about whether she's sleeping on clean sheets or not. So what do we do if all the reproductions are lies, and we know they are, how can we understand them? Well, Fernando and I decided we would try to visualize these. And you know, that's the way we try to understand things. So we wrote a whole bunch of code that would go out, it would look at images found on the web of a given painting, and align them so that we could compare exactly how they differed. How are these lies all different from each other? That lets us do things like this. We can take a patch of Dane's thigh. What color is that? I don't know, although it might make a nice bathroom tile pattern. It's not just this one piece that is completely different. Um, pretty much any part of this painting is, is different as well. If we look at the drapery, for example, that she's on, you know that too, every hue of the rainbow is there. Look at that. Now this is a very point-by-point -point visualization. What if we want something more holistic? Uh, we might want to see all the reproductions at once and get a sense of the sweep of how different they are. We created a kind of chimera image by aligning shards of the reproductions. And you can see the difference in color, in contrast, in texture. Look at the ragged edges. You can see nobody agrees what is the real boundary of this painting. And it becomes a lens. You know, we can make these chimera images for all sorts of paintings. And I think each one teaches us a little bit of something. You know, I started to get more respect for some of the, the the old masters of the past. You know, look at the beautiful colors of St. Matthew's robe. They're all lies, but I think it's the mark of great talent that you can choose colors that are immune to bad reproduction. They just get better, perhaps. You know, here is uh, the presciently titled Twittering Machine. And again, I love the colors in reproduction. Um, you also can tell no one agrees on the boundary. What about black and white photos? You might think those are genuinely immune, especially to color problems, but no. Not only do you get brightness and contrast issues, but you can start to see some interesting yellows creeping in here. And to me, that actually makes it a little more interesting. Um, it can get much more dramatic as well. You know, here we have a, paint uh, a photo that is black and white, or is it brown and white, or is it mint and chocolate? Think about the different impressions all of these make. Sometimes I think you really get a sense of what parts of a painting people care about. Here is Madame X, and you can see in her dress and her flesh tones, things are pretty well aligned. But look at the background, nothing alike, and nobody agrees where to crop it. It's like the person who is setting up lights to take a photo, who is tweaking knobs in Photoshop, cropping, they just weren't looking at the background. They literally didn't see it. You know, it's interesting. Every painting has its own story. I wish I had more time to show you. Um, but if you look at each one, you see these differences. Here the background, relatively well calibrated, but look at those flesh tones, you know, ranging from a very healthy pink to radioactive zombie yellow. <laughs> and so what do we take from this? You know, if all reproductions are lies, and we've always known that, you know, do we just declare defeat? No, on the contrary. I think the internet has brought us a chance to actually declare victory, or at least not a tiny victory. We can look at all reproductions at once, and realize, you know, a physical painting looks very different in any different light or different mood. Let's see all those differences together, and maybe together we get the best reproduction of them. Thank you.